All right, here we go. Oh, we're live. Oh, we are live. No, it's a, so that countdown clock was totally fucked. It, it, it was. It was. And the scariest thing that could ever happen when you're trying to do live stuff is if one little thing goes wrong, then it's just like, oh my god, nothing's going to work. It, the power goes. goes. So crisis averted. Yes, we're here. Crisis four confirmed. And we're yes, the stream now on CryEngine. Exactly. Um, and we're here at five. Yeah. Five o'clock on a Thursday. Yep. So thank you guys for joining us one day early this yep. week. Took you long enough, Charles Broccoli. Yeah. Watching you. He came in right at the end. Yep. That's all he is. Yeah. So that's how he is, man. Countdown. Yeah, waiting for the three pointer at the fucking buzzer. So. Yeah, and we've got the elusive Tylus uh, Tremel over here. It's Thursday. Well, I know, but it's still, like, so people may not be used to seeing you without a tie. This is, this is, this is yeah. casual, man. What happens on Thursday. Travel tomorrow, so this is like going for a run from hell. People, it happens on Thursday. <laughs> get out of bed and I throw something on. This was on the floor when I got up. I picture it like on Friday, the, the, like the suit and the outfit's just there and you just kind of <laughs> like bam through it. And then? It's yeah, it's pretty <laughs> much it. It's like, I just find shit that's laying around and I toss it on and say, fuck it, it ain't Friday, so whatever. So thanks for joining us. We've got Chris Milky over as our TD. Follow him on Twitter at Milky Fingers. He does a great job every single week. Playing the banjo. Always nice. good to have him. Nice. You're only going to be on one more show until our uh, our community intern starts. So, oh. uh, dude, oh, are we okay. replacing Milky with the intern? Well, he's got to well, be. You're be a guest now. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yep. So we got a lot. Know of... If I like that arrangement. Uh. All right. Can't trust you're the new kids. Just like looking down on me for your little pedestal. No, nah, dude, these new kids. You start yeah, fucking pushing buttons and shit. That's and start that's fucking up the camera. This, 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 this is why we haze him. <laughs> what, like this? <laughs> just start moving stuff around. Such hazing. So we got a great show. We're going to uh, look at some stuff in the news. Um, we're going to take a look at a just. I don't know about this video, man. It's it's pretty it's pretty weird. What? It's pretty weird. He's saying it's weird. You're awesome. the one who produced it. I think by the time we're awesome. done with these, Tremel's going to get his SAG card. He's going to wind up like, awesome. acting it's, in real movies. It has the most awesomest thing ever seen. It has nothing to do with video games, and it refers to something in the 80s that probably people have never even seen before. Dude, now that you mention it, I actually saw a commercial today what? on YouTube no. that used one of those characters. Okay, well, no lie. Dude. Full circle. No lie. We're so, we're so bad at And then at the end <laughs> of the show, we're actually going to take a look at some new art, which yep. is really, yes. really cool, and uh, maybe talk a little bit about how it fits in to the game and all that kind a of stuff. A little bit. So, a little bit. Tiny bit. So cool. Let's just jump into the industry bull jive. What have we got? Here we go. So, jive. Yeah, a, a lot of stuff, actually. Um, you know, it's kind of a slow news week, but there have been a couple things that have occurred. Yep. Um, Kickstarters are crazy, and one of my favorite... Um, one of my favorite game producers is uh, Koji Irigashi, yep. and he did the Castlevania games on the DS and Symphony of the Night and all that. He did a Kickstarter for Bloodstained and just blew it up completely. Yeah, well, it's just like, you know, with uh, Mighty Number no. 9. Yeah, you yeah. Know, what you're seeing is a lot, you know, it's, it's like a, a ukulele. A lot of these developers who were told over the years by the publishers who hold the purse strings, nobody wants that game, et cetera, et cetera. Then they come along, they go directly to the fans, they get you know some of the funding to make the game, and step forward profit, it seems like, right? What does it have to do with a ukulele? Uh, you, no, do you, the game is Ukulele. Oh. It's about it's a, a gecko. Oh, so, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> it's, a, it's a spiritual sequel to Banjo-Kazooie starring a gecko and a, and a purple man. Oh, okay. That's like saying you worked in television and people think you said in television. Yeah, that's exactly what I heard. Yeah. In television. It's like, excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> exactly. So that escalated quickly. Um, but yeah, but it's not always that simple though. And I, I actually had posted this article, this is a great opinion piece on, I think it was Polygon, um, by uh, another developer who had done a Kickstarter. And the point of the article is pointing out how a lot of Kickstarters these days, and I've always said Kickstarters, yeah, the money's cool, but they're more about the mm -hmm. PR and the marketing. And a lot of them are the developers who are asking for only like 10% of the actual projected budget. Because there's like some weird magical threshold on Kickstarter that if you ask for more than half a million, people think you're greedy, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, there's this trend of you know legendary designers doing it now, and they're actually getting real proper backing. And the suggestion in this article is there may still be publisher type people involved uh, mm. who are paying for the other ninety percent of the budget that could then still potentially get in the way of the creator and their vision for it that they want the fans to have. So, so it's slightly deceptive. To some it degree. is slightly, but I mean, you, they'll probably still get the game they want. It'll probably still be great. Uh, but the thing is, is, we know about these games; otherwise, we might not have known about them, right? You know, because yeah. otherwise, it would have had to have been a ridiculous PR marketing campaign, et cetera. And this is still much more grassroots. But that said, you know, 
this goes back to my whole point about people who are being armchair developers who do not know how games are made or where the money goes or the budget, assuming that, you know, like when Tim Schafer had the, yeah. what, $2.5 million or whatever for uh, Broken Age, and then somebody tweeted him, like, you swindles us out of our money, and then Tim just did, like, a three-tweet breakdown, breaking down the costs and, and, and how it, where the money actually went, and then the, the trolls just shut up. He's well, like, I mean, a lot of people go? don't understand, like, how, how much it actually costs to make a game. So, like, when I see guys who are, like... The, Developers that I know and that I've seen over the years, and they go to Kickstarter and they get X amount of dollars, and I'm like, you can't make a game for that amount of money. Well, like no the, way you can make like the MMO game. ones that raise a million? Exactly. So it's like, no way you can make a game for that amount of money, but people see that number and they're like, oh yeah, you can easily make an MMO for four million dollars. And I'm like, no, it's not even close to possible. Yeah. Like, even if, if you spent, what, two months making it? Yeah, you could probably do that. But, but I mean, it, so, I mean, to be fair, that is a lot of money. However, when you break it down over X months and Y people and yeah. salaries that are decent, especially in the, not even considering North Carolina cost of living, but Bay Area, yeah, you know, yeah, it breaks totally. down really, really quickly. So, you know, I think a lot of this, you know, comes upon the developers to do what they can to educate the consumer about the reality of development uh, and just, you know, not everybody's going to learn it, but if you can, you know, take a few consumers and, and educate them, then they'll act as the evangelist for explaining, you know, kind of to the people who don't listen. It might get better, but still, people people only read a headline. They only see what they want to see sometimes. Yeah. So I guess the question is, if you know that the, the, the company is receiving Kickstarter money and publisher money, are they still considered indie? No, that's the thing that, yeah. you know, they kind of, they tuck under, you know, they kind of hide in the background. It's like, oh, we're doing a Kickstarter, etc. And by the way, we're looking for the rest of our funding from somebody with like another, you know, $15 million or something, you know, that, and, and nobody's going to just give them $15 million as investors and not have their two cents in there, right? They're going to, you know, do some bullshit market testing thing. Uh, there was an article that went around today about uh, Tim Schafer's video where he revealed the market research for uh, Psychonauts. And oh, the things that wow. Microsoft had market researched and like, you know, the humor is really not that good. It might not hold up for replayability and just like crazy shit like that, right? And uh, it's the whole thing, you know, you can, you can focus, test something into the ground. But I think, uh, you know, it's, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it, this is like eating away at existing other Kickstarters because, you know, it's the whole thing when people gave Zach Braff crap about doing Kickstarter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Look, it's, it's the, you know, people will vote for their dollars. If they want it, they'll do it, right? If there's something else that comes along, they'll find a way to fund that as well. Well, something that people really, really want is to see this Bethesda E3 press conference. Yeah. Right? So Bethesda is doing their own E3 press conference, and they uh, released a teaser. It's not a trailer. I would say this is not a trailer, but it's a teaser teasing their event. It was, it was a, for Doom. It was a Vine, dude. Yeah. I mean, it, was, I think it was like four yeah. seconds. Yeah. Man. So let's take a look at that, Chris. So I guess they're rebooting Doom. They're, uh, I've, a couple things went around. Uh, a few Wait, did you ago. blink? Did oh, you did blink? Yeah. Did you miss it? Can we do it again? Oh, yeah. we can... oh it'll, it'll replay. Oh, okay. We have the power. All right, here we go. Here we go again. Don't yeah, blink. it'll just loop indefinitely. Up, oh, shotgun, and yeah, there's a the Revenant, I think. Yeah. All right, so we, we're old school in this business. We love Doom coming up, right? I don't care. <laughs> I'm done. That's valid. I'm, 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 I've already passed Doom. Like, Doom, after Doom 3. It's, I mean, like it was that was it. Here's my here's my counter to you. Yeah, Doom Three was just like, all right, I'm done. When I saw the Wolfenstein announcement of the new yes. order when they did that, when I saw the E3 demo, I'm just walking away going like, that looks. I just think that looks bad. I don't want to play that. And then I played it, and the reviewers played it, and the gamers played it, and it was actually a fantastic shooter. A fantastic I played game. Wolfenstein. I, I just I didn't think it was that great. Like some of the, the control schemes in Wolfenstein, like. Just in the first fifteen minutes was clunky. It was not fluid. Like a lot of things that that you would think was would, would be easy, were basically playing on the keyboard and mouse, weren't. Which it seemed like it was like made for the console, but then ported to the PC. Which I don't know if that's the case or not. But that's what it felt like when I was playing it, because like, you have to like you at one point you had to like slide, but you had to press like shift and the left button or do some other shit like that was just not traditional type of stuff that well, you have so to do. Well, so your disliking of everything apart from that, the reviewers and the gamers did like Wolf. I don't... So I, I, have, hope, I have hope for this I too. Can, I give two shits what other people think. <laughs> this is my opinion. I'm not saying everybody felt that way. This is my opinion about Wolfenstein. But you're not even willing to give the new Doom a chance. I'm not going to give Doom a chance at all because I got burnt on Rage. I got Ooh. burnt really bad on Rage because so Doom- I was looking forward to that game. I mean, it's like, dude, it could weird. wait... To the get to that game, and I played it, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was really disappointed. Yeah, Borderlands won that fight. 
It was beautiful, though. It was a nice looking game, but it was just shallow as shit. So Doom backwards is mood, and you would say that your mood is definitely <laughs> not for Doom. What? Well, well I guess the question energy. is just negative energy. I right guess now. the question is who actually made it. Well, right. Okay, so that's the thing. If so it actually what made if it, machine games? What if machine? I ain't got nothing to do with it. If it made it, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. I'm well, sorry. I think it at this point has been. What if Val, what if Valve made it? What if this is Half Life Three? If this is That's Half Life Three, <laughs> then maybe it's, it'll be great. What if? But I'm be not, like some Kojima I'm, level trolling right I'm there. I'm not gonna be the first one into the pool. I can tell you that now. Well, I, I'm. I will wait for the trailer, and you know, I'll be cautiously optimistic about it. And I'll give it a go. Yeah, so we'll move on. But I do agree with you, Cliff. I think that the Wolfenstein, the latest Wolfenstein, was a breath of fresh air for the franchise. It was a tired franchise. We've seen it a thousand times. Hopefully, they can do something similar with Doom. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, 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 I got. Dude, That's look fun. at the track record, though, dude. Look at the track record. I mean, no disrespect to it at all, but still, like, reality is reality. Like, they haven't done anything good in a long time. Well, I don't think it's the same it, man. It, that, that, it, is, the, the, it has changed. I don't know. The ego, the superego. Yeah, I'm not just coming for you. No, like, I you, don't apply, know. you apply the same logic to me, you know, my last actual ship game was Gears 3. So, then I should fucking quit. <laughs> <laughs> Go That's back to okay. planet size. So, just quit now. So, oh, wow. Yeah. I don't think that's the case, though. I don't think that's the case with this situation. I'm saying, like, you haven't made a game by yourself. They did. They made a, a couple games, and they just like, mm. and then well, they made this huge game that was supposed well, to be they, Rage, and it was like, my. Well, I, maybe Bethesda can whip them into shape. Then. And it, it would be, for me, it would be a lot different. The Bethesda if, money truck being backed up for the production? If, no, if it was a different Zinax. game, if it was just not Doom. Yeah. Just try something new, like... We can do an entire <laughs> podcast about <laughs> publishers saying you can have yeah. an existing just, brand or what's behind door number two. Yeah, and go, they, nine something. times out of ten, the fuckers go, existing brand. Let's reboot Gem. Yeah, try, try uh, something new. I went new, there. Dude. I went there. Try something new. Tremel yeah. love that trailer. Oh, Jim and so the holograms. Stupid, All right, let's move on to the next one. Jim is excitement. Oh, that trailer looks so bad. It's got nothing to do with Jim um, at all. As far as oh, let's start that over. It's a brand. Let's go back. That's all they care about. Yeah, yeah. So, one thing that kind of has crept up in the past couple of days, Witcher 3 came out. Yep. Uh, a lot of people are stoked about it. Um, and now that there's this kind of this controversy that brings up this old controversy, aliens, colonial marines, you know, basically uh, the bait and switch. Uh, uh, what you see, the, what you see in the I am so switch. tired of this argument, dude. What? How is this an issue? Let it out. People don't How understand. How is this an issue? Seriously. Well, I mean, We've been doing this for years. We've been doing this for years. Our good friend Arjan tried to pull the wool over our eyes with the kill zone thing. It's been going on for years. That that's what people this need to is hear. Nothing new. Here, skip a little bit forward. How Chris? are people getting bent out of shape about this? Because the consumer believes they've been doing Why would they ever believe that? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> why yeah, here we go. They, so why would they ever believe it though? That's what cracks me up. You gotta know it's like things for, for, well, for production and for marketing sake, and then there's the fucking game. Well, it's the, the, the consumers names. started getting wise once they started realizing what were bull shots. And that term got coined on a lot of the forums like Gaff, right? And I think, you know, it's one of those things like the delta between what you create for a perfect E3 demo or a, a like select walkthrough to the press at one event versus the game you ship two years later. It's not always the same. No, yeah, you have to back. fit the keep, whale in the goldfish it, bowl. Keep it at that one spot, Chris. <laughs> No, I wanted to really? see like right here. So they are saying that the trailer looks better somehow. The character, the character looks like he has better lighting on there actually. The in which one, the trailer or the on the left? Yeah, on the left. But that's the the final. Yeah, they, they're trying. Yeah, to but they're saying that it's better over here. But yeah. it's not like the the whole purpose of this is so that you can see the characters in the space. In the trailer, the thing is poorly lit. Like, why would you want that? Well, that's also the difference between what technically correct lighting is versus the yeah, exactly. one game, which is a lot. If you've ever seen like a Hollywood set. There's this insane grid of just lighting all over it of every single angle. That's just, and they're using bounce lights in certain yep. scenes. They got like a guy holding a fucking white card next to some dude's face. Some yep. of the lights up. Like I mean, people gotta understand, dude. Like the first run of shots and all that other stuff. It's just so you. Can but the get problem interested. is that the, you know the, the consumers are still buying the games, which is fine. But the the marketing hype has to be that much louder, that much better, that much better looking than everything else in a world where there's so much shit competing for your attention. That they, they still it still happens, but 
The thing is, is you know, it's expectation management, right? Like the thing that I don't understand is, you know, what happens with these. And I, as a developer, I can't wrap my head around it. Is why in Watch Dogs they were able to find code that that stuff was deliberately disabled. That's where the conspiracy theorists start coming in. I do remember that. You yeah, know, see, yeah. look at this. <clears throat> like the, they're saying that the trailer side looks better somehow. I think the water looks. A it's better. like washed out. The uh, draw distance. It's like mad like washed out, dude. You can barely see the character over here. Because well, he's not the, lit pro- the properly. Lighting reflections on the on the water. But, it, but again, in, 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 in a one section section of the world, you can put, you can turn on all these features that may not scale globally to the entire world, right? Yeah. So well, are they talking about like the PC version versus yeah. gameplay? Like at the end of the day, though, I mean, it's a gorgeous game. Um, and do you think that people's expectations are too high? I don't know. This, I mean, looking at this, I don't know what people's expectations yeah. are. There is a sub market of super hardcore folks that pick over everything and they, 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 they kind of crowdsource it right now, right? Where you know it takes one dude who's determined taking all these screenshots and making these comparisons, he puts it out, it goes viral. This is 145,000 views. That's like nothing to sneeze after something like this, right? I think that there's a big difference though between this, which I don't think that there's much of a controversy here because it's not broken, it's not glitchy, it's not. I know out. what I'm but saying is like, I don't think the trailer looks better because that's the, that's the fucking argument. But like, the trailer is so much better looking than the PC version. But when you it's look, not, though. But when you look at Aliens, Colonial Marines... Okay, like, I'm not even talking about that. That's them. a huge... Yeah, yeah, I don't even want to talk but, about them or Watch Dogs. Like, that's, okay. two, that's two different things on the ends of the spectrum. Another podcast. Yeah. So, so yeah, you be the judge. You Everyone out there be the judge and... Just on a quick note about this is, you know, the developers at CD Projekt, right? CD like, Projekt, right. You do yeah. not get a more community-friendly, no, totally. forward-facing, transparent developer than these folks. So if you think they're pulling the wool over your eyes, like, intentionally, like, we're all fucked. So let's keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. And then shifting away from games a little bit, uh, Mad Max, which I'm seeing this weekend. I have still not seen it. They all die. Oh. You ruined it. Fuck you. There's a lot of cars. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, I've heard it. I heard. I've heard it's stellar. Yeah, yeah it's um. I didn't get the chance to see it. Yeah. You know, I had the joy of rewatching the first uh, Road Warrior and uh, and the, just the first two, and I still skipped Thunderdome with the misses, and uh, they're great. But it's like there's a fan theory, by the way, about this that people are uh, kind of guessing that Max is actually, or you know, uh, Tom Hardy in this movie is the mm-hmm. grown-up version of the feral kid from the original movies. Oh, that's kind of cool. A, a really, kind of interesting idea, right? But yeah, I mean. Just the, the visuals alone, the fact that there's very little CG, the fact that there's so much of that stuff was actually fucking built. You know, they're out there in the desert in Africa getting sand in their fucking eyeballs, like strapping people to cars, and you know, having real stunt people doing that Cirque du Soleil shit with the, the poles, which look completely silly and gratuitous until you realize that the car was armored and you wanted to get in from the top, that would make the most yeah. sense to grab something or snatch, the, snatch them out. I mean, here's the thing about George Miller, the, the director and the creative behind this. He's fucking 70. Like, and he crushed it. Like, I just think that's amazing, right? Like, you know, and he also yeah. directed Babe and Happy Feet. So. <laughs> he has a well rounded well, portfolio. He directs movies about animals and movies about people acting like animals. <laughs> so, it's, uh, you need to go see it. It's, it's fucking fantastic. No, no, no. I, I, I can't wait. And I think uh, it's really refreshing to see something like this because before I was looking at this and I was like, eh, you know, they're doing a reboot, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll go see it because I'm a fan of the franchise. But to have something like this be so well critically received. I think is a, is a huge. It is a huge point. nonstop, start to finish, just two hours of just crazy awesome action and just enough story to understand the motivation and the context with just enough like lines about what's going on and you know so the moments you want to cheer for. Charlize Theron is fucking awesome and you know, like still looks gorgeous with one hand and a shaved head and just rocks it. So she's got that crazy paint job and everything. It's fucking awesome. Right. I don't like the one hand, dude. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm hoping uh, if they do a follow up that she actually attaches different shit on it, like you know, gun attachments or anything. I don't, I don't like like the whole one hand thing. Just I don't know. Do you like Army of Darkness? Uh, Bruce Campbell. It was, a, it was a good movie. Yeah, All right. but I'm gonna go I'm see one Mad hand. Max. I don't All really right. have any feelings either way. I love the. But first you still haven't one. seen it yet. No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I saw. I love the first uh, first two. You got a holiday weekend this weekend, dude. All right, well, let's go see it together. We'll go on Sunday. Yeah, right. You, ain't, you, got, you got guests in the house. Uh, he was see? supposed to go to this baby shower with me, but he fucking dogged me out. Man. I got baby showers, are, baby out. showers are terrible. I know. Are I don't want to go. I'm getting too? stuck. Are you going to that? I got to go. All right, I'll be Rohan there. said he was know, going, but now he's like, oh, I got guests in the house. Play games, oh, play, play games like pin the sperm and the egg and stuff what? like that. No, no, no. Have fun, baby showers. No. Have fun with that. It is Sarah, so you never know. Could be paying. I'm, I'm just gonna get drunk. 
<laughs> Chris is going to get gonna blitzed. Your, Chris is going to be in the, guy the, name in the corner with the hat on. Yeah, You're going to bring your box of booze. How are you doing? All right, guys. Well, let's. Um, that's it for the kind of the news. Let's watch this uh, this video that has nothing to do with video games, <laughs> and it's really. You're just seeing how far you can push things with him now. Uh, yeah, and I think this is the limit. I think this is the limit. I think Tremel is Rohan's uh, muse, and we're no, gonna dial it back. There's we're gonna more. dial it back. There's so. more. To we need to go deeper. We can go deeper. We can go deeper with this. All right, so let's roll it. I don't consider myself an expert on anything, really. I'm just a man living life. But character designs, I have a knack for it. So I've been told, for some reason, people always come to me about them. Here at Boss Key, I'm the man for the job. I've solved a few design mysteries in my time, and I've seen things that would keep you up at night. Images that stay with you. Images that cannot be forgotten or unseen. They stick with you like a lingering cough that just won't go away. This latest one that passed by my desk is one of those. Not sure where it came from or why it came to me, but it cannot be ignored. These are real life monsters. Just what in hell are they? Why are they allowed to be shown to children back in the 80s? Fry guys. I need to rationalize their existence somehow. So that's how I figured them. Gross and impractical. And to sell food for God's sake. A rational mind can maybe just process them like a foyer in the night. A passing glance soon forgotten. Me? I see terror. There's a reason why these things have been scorched from the earth. But why bring them up now? 30 years later? And why me? Maybe to remind the world that design crimes still exist. If we don't understand our history, we're doomed to repeat the same mistakes. The Fry Guys were a cosmic mistake. We cannot risk repeating. It's my damn job to make sure we don't let it happen again. Some outtakes. Outtakes coming. Just murdered that one. I mean, Merry Christmas. Oh. Stick a fork in that one. Cause it's done. Did you get that? <laughs> Carrot butts. Nothing shit in the ice cream being the shot. And then stop and then look back and shake your head and leave. You, but you need to God. walk fully out because I still see your silhouette. What? Oh, Push so all the. It melts fine. It's fine. It's melting, dude. You can feel it, dude. It's melting. It's fine. It's not even solid anymore. That's what happened to it, dude. Seriously. I know. Hey, you're the one. I have to hurry up. Right right you're the one burning daylight. Let's do it. Come on. All right. So I was all soft. He's all like, what the all fuck right. got the rest? I don't think the freezer works. Yeah, <laughs> slow cast. <laughs> slow cast. <laughs> it was, it's pretty weird. I don't, wait, just, where did this come from? Like, what? Oh we were just, I don't know. We were, we were on Gchat just talking about something. I don't know how McDonald's came up. We were just like, man. Because it's the re the rebooting of the uh, hamburger. I think so. Yeah. I think it's James, I think it's James Dean underneath you that mask, by the way. 
I don't know. You sent me an image of the Hamburglar, and I was like, nah, that's not going to work for something else. Yeah. I and, and I remember that, and then I was like, man, those characters were awful back then. We just started sending characters back and forth. Grimace, yeah. Birdie, <laughs> all of them, and we got to the Fry Guys. What Go- was Grimace? Uh, exactly. Uh, according to, like, I am... Well, no, <laughs> See, we've gone into According this. to the we've Wikipedia, he is supposed to be the embodiment of a shake. The taste what? of a, the embodiment of a shake. How do you, what, how did I don't know why. It's, it, it, why it's, a, it's a shit shake. So when you drink it, you grimace. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, this shit shake's fucking terrible. I don't know why. He's oh, oh my this god! Is a movie god. Like a big but that's his, his description: an embodiment oh. of a shake. All right, grimace. Okay. Something from like the '50s that didn't translate. Wow. Yeah. So I think we was trying to figure out who the hell uh, the cop was. Well, there was Mayor McCheese. Mayor McCheese was the mayor. And then there was there was the cop dude. It was a cop. We was trying to figure out who the cop was. Grimace. No, Grimace was the big purple blob looking dude. Yeah, Yeah, who was the shake? Yeah, he's a cop. He's like a Big Mac head in the cop. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. This is a deep, deep... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can can go really deep. Thorough thorough conversation about this. So, yeah. Talking about over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But we were just like... Yeah, what if we? What if you try to explain what they were? And I was like, "Design crimes, I got it. <laughs> Design crimes with Tremel." Yeah, and we're do, here, and it's film noir style. We got this awesome studio. Looks like a detective. I have a feeling that film noir stuff might come back. Um, um, the camera just might. loves the studio in no, black great. and white. So, Sweet. yeah, that was that was fun. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching it. Yeah, it was really weird. Anyways, <clears throat> so we have a. Yeah. Um, so we've got some uh, questions uh, from the community, from Twitter, and from our Reddit. From the Twitty Beth. Yeah, some of these are pretty pretty simple. We can get through pretty quick. Lee Roberts um, is on it. I saw him last time. Yeah, yeah Lee's great. Time. What's up, Lee Roberts? Yeah, Lee's great. So from uh, from Twitter, um, so after I said asks, what's been the most frustrating workplace issue, and what has been the most productive thing in the workplace? The most frustrating is Chris Milkey's gas problem. <laughs> <laughs> On any given afternoon, if, if you were to light a match, <laughs> all these historic windows <laughs> explode outward. Um, no, uh, you know, like, okay, so this is going to sound funny, so bear with me. Is game developers, yeah, funnier than your farts. Game developers aren't always the best communicators, and right now in our office setup, we have the front of the house which is very art heavy, and then the back of the house, which is where design and code and animators are, and there's this hallway, and for some reason, certain people never cross that hallway, like it's the fucking DMZ in North, in like North Korea. And like I teased Jayhawk, our amazing concept artist, he'll actually come by and, hey, what did you want with that? I'm like, what are you doing here? What, what are you doing back here? Like, you're scaring me, man. So, I mean, I don't mind getting up and, you know, you know stretching my legs and checking in with everybody, but... We're taking over the space above us soon, since we're at 35 people and we're expanding. And so now, there's not only a hallway, but there might be a staircase, too. And that actually does affect communication sometimes. Yeah, I think the most frustrating thing has been, like, the, the noise. The, the amount of noise, not from people, but from inanimate objects. Like, the air conditioner, like, when it goes off, you're like... Oh. It's like it's because it's so like loud. Or the the the, to, the toilet pipes. Oh and, yeah, uh, the right, right behind oh, poor Eric. Eric and <laughs> yeah, it's just like all the noises that the building makes, and then like when they go off, you're like so relieved that they stopped. But of course, you can't keep the AC off all day, so you know you gotta bear with it. But it's historic, man. Yeah, I mean, I'd say one of the most productive things is like everybody's in like kind of in the same space. You know, we really can't get away from each other. So yeah, we're pretty packed in there. Packed in tight. It's good. We're cozy. Cozy and warm. Mm-hmm. Lots of that, that musk. So cozy. Ugh. Man musk. Lee Roberts uh, from Twitter asks, Are you looking for Project Blue Streak to have more natural environments, man-made, or a mix of each? Pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah, I'd say it's a mix. A I, I like, I like a perfect mix, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like one of the levels we're working on right now is a lot of rock outcroppings with a lot of architecture that's been built over it. You know, you may have seen some of this in the concept art. And... Um, I just don't want to do fucking space hallways mm-hmm. or concrete bunkers with hazard striping, like caution tape. Like those things are just so like somebody's rendering of a Law and Order episode of what they think a video game is, right? Yeah. Like green barrels exploding and shit. So that's you know, I, I like one part natural, one part man-made. You know, so we actually have the best of both worlds. Yeah. And I think from the the concept art that you can find over on our subreddit and stuff really kind of sells that. You can see a lot of like what we're toying with in terms of environments. Yeah. So and it's possible <laughs> to just get environment fatigue. You know, it's like yeah. if it's just all bombed out cities again, we're just like, all right, I, I've done this for years. Let's do some new shit. 
So next up, I love this question because you know we don't. Finally stop. We don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it finally stopped. And there, it yeah, the AC feels good. Good. <laughs> feels good. Yeah. Um, we don't. You know, we play a lot of games, but we also watch a lot of movies. And I freaking love this question. I already have my answer lined up, and I have a feeling it's going to be the exact same thing you're going to say. But Invader asks, if you could watch a movie for the first time again, what would it be? Blade. I'm. I'm going to go. What? Cabin in the Woods. What? Ah. Go oh, what? Yeah. Come on! Dude, right, horror, right. horror movies crack me up. That, that is not a horror movie. That, that's, that a, that's, a, a, that's a meta statement on horror, much like it, Scream was. Yeah, it's oh. just like, whatever, dude. All right. Blade is mine. Um, you're going to have to go with Seven. Okay. Uh, yeah, All right. I, did not I was never that, forget. I, I was. Not I normally that, say Big Lebowski. <laughs> my brother and I. God, I must have been in like a early twenties, late teens, and we're in Southern California at the theater, and we're like grabbing the seats, like holy shit, like towards the end, like where is this gonna go? What's in the no, fucking I, box? All right. Seven's a good movie. That's See, just a great. Movie. Seven's great. We had a good movie. <clears throat> Oh, come on. <laughs> Your in the Woods okay. is like a love letter to every horror fan. It's an okay movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I disagree. The I whole premise it. of it was just garbage. But it's it not supposed garbage. to be serious. It's satire. That's the whole point. It was garbage. And it was like bad satire. It was like, uh, it was oh, making fun of God. every fucking horror movie there is. Yeah, it was like just a send up of all the tropes. Exactly. So it was kind of whack like that. Yeah, oh, that, I think that was the point. I know. That's why it wasn't no good. It was just an okay movie. It wasn't like right. the greatest movie. No. All right. Why would I want to you know, see that again? Hemsworth's like, I'm going to end this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, why, right, dude? Like, oh, it's, it's so awesome. good. Why, it's why so would you good. need to see that again? Like, Be- without knowledge of it. Because every 10 minutes, I was seeing something that was just making me entertain. I had the joy I of having it. that happen last year with my best friend and his girlfriend. Oh, okay. And we were going to watch a movie, and they were like, going through the list. What do you guys want to watch tonight? And they're like, what's Cabin in the Woods? And Lauren and I were like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't say Fear of a Black Hat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you go you go watch your Blade. Uh, you go watch Blade. Blade. Watch my Cabin in the Woods. Blade was the shit, dude. Blade, Blade was good. I watched Blade like seven times. Yeah. All right, right at the movie. Okay, I'm gonna call you out on that one. The final boss, <laughs> Steven, Steven Dorf. Of all the bad guys, Steven Do fucking Dorf. Some motherfuckers always want to ice skate uphill, man. I'm telling you, dude. That's some shit, dude. The dude does Come ads on. for like vaping now. It doesn't oh, matter, dude. Shit. That was Blade. That was that was it just made it. at his finest. That actually made. Oh, I'm gonna Snipes disagree. I think Demolition fine. Man was. Oh, oh, oh Demolition. Oh, okay. Come okay, on, Demo. really? All right, we could do a whole. Snipes at his finest. We could do every. A his whole finest, not tax paying finest. Dude. <laughs> exactly, dude. Ta- it ain't ta- his fault. He it, tried to get bad account. Bad any, account. Movie, any movie that Taco Bell can win the franchise wars, oh, I'm down. Ah, right you know what we shouldn't stall in this office is one of those little cursed ticket things. Oh, yeah. That oh, thing yeah. Is, we, we, owe, <laughs> we would owe all kinds of cash. We'd be waiting for the tickets from our Oh, God. God. We'd all be broke. All right. Coming so, to America. Come in, that's a good yeah, one. That's why I had the pleasure of showing the missus. All right, so we'll get through these. The I'm next call one. Cash I'm a calm cash <laughs> uh, from our subreddit, um, Xeno Psychosis asks, "Do you guys plan on any vehicle game types?" No. Mm-hmm. There yeah. you have it. It's not, I mean, it, it's not that simple. Um, you know, you love vehicles. It is it's just so much simple. Fun. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm saying as far as like, <laughs> it is that simple. You're right. It is that simple. When we made a conscious decision with what we're doing to do five on five. Mm-hmm. And there's precious network packets that go through, and we could use those network packets for a more airtight five on five experience, and potentially some physics in the game, or other interesting things. Or we could spend it on you know crazy vehicles flying through. And vehicles are fine and cool, you know, Planet Side, Halo, etc. But it's not our game. Like the second you start introducing vehicles or max, the maps get huger, and then that's that's when the snipers win. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I didn't even think about the the latency and the way that it affects. Do you want JFK dead? <laughs> Again. <laughs> boom boom what um, so this is this is interesting uh, blackjack7 on our subreddit asks will you allow the use of game pads for this game um I don't see why not but it's one of those things it's we, more complicated than we are really optimized for keyboard and mouse play like very vertical our pacing is very crazy it is conceivable you could do it but I don't see why you'd want to for me when I'm on my PC and I play a shooter I want the keyboard and the mouse if I were to play like you know uh, Mordor or you know uh, you know uh, any sort of game that's more Batman which is much more melee oriented so third that's person what, basically yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly so that's you know unless it's Wolfenstein then you know you should play with the controller that slide it's just too, too hard. So, finally here, Adavax311, uh, who's a regular contributor on our subreddit. What's he, up, Adavax? Yeah, great guy. <clears throat> Add that, Vax. Add it. 
Um, Jenny he, McCarthy. He asks, um, I know it was mentioned that you want to do a game that plays differently at the beginning of the match than from the, the end of the match. Um, with that, I was wondering if you were implementing dynamic choke points, which is an interesting idea. Only if you use the safe word. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, Police with, report. With the, <laughs> the, <laughs> report. <laughs> Getting warm in here. Uh, turn that air conditioning back on. Um, it's well, we, we call them basically bottlenecks, but the idea I'm assuming is that depending on what's going on in the map, certain areas are available or not. Um, you know, the way that our main game type is shaping up, we actually, of course, there's there's some two bases, big reveal right there. Um, and we had this idea back where depending on the status of your team or the other team, certain doors would open and close. Um, we haven't gone back to it yet because so many things have been kind of in flux with the game type. But mm-hmm. that was actually a nice reminder for me to talk to Scott, our lead level designer. Like, dude, what happened to the doors? Those are kind of cool. So, thanks, Adamax. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, thank you guys. Please ask us questions on Twitter and on our Reddit and Facebook, wherever. Ask us questions, and we'll do our best to get you answers. And there's a lot of people from the from the studio that are on Twitter that are more than happy to kind of jump in as well. Be nice. So, be nice. Yeah. We're nice people. Call Rohan a sexy panda bear. Hmm. What is up with that? Uh, it's random shit that comes into my head. Nah, it's just a random sexy band of bear. Yeah, you know, it's got to have exclusives. <laughs> Sorry, I just got, got Keeley for a second there. <laughs> you got the, the spirit of Keeley in you. Some fucking Doritos. Um, uh, all right, so let's uh, let's take a look at some new art. We have art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we do have art. Art. That's all you guys show up for. Right? Like, yeah, I don't yeah. want any of these guys yeah, this fucking is cool. hammering. Let's see some cool art. Boom! Yeah, so good friend Ethan Evans pulled this one off. Oh, the guy who's pulled... too hot for TV? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's too famous yeah. now, dude. He gets on, on camera and he's like, man, I got to talk to my agent if you want to know. <laughs> I need a ride. You know, he's got riders. We'll, and... we'll do lunch. Set it up. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's... he's like, I'm tired of people saying I look like Ben Affleck. Oh, oh yeah. He's such a... So this is actually one image that we split into two, um, but it shows the process of, of this, uh, essentially, what, a jetpack, glider pack? Something? It's like a glider pack. Okay. Tribe okay. score confirmed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but no, it's really cool to see it. Let's go to the next one, Cliff, or Chris, and we can go back and forth. So yeah, this is this is awesome to kind of see the process of how it actually works mechanically. Yeah, so I mean that's one thing that you know Ethan, having come from design school, has this kind of almost sense where he could like you know be designing you know concept cars. Yep. You know he has that kind of look to it, and you know we we struggle to make everything look like it will actually work, and you know we don't have to make sure it really physically actually finally works, but if it kind of feels like it, people buy into it and it adds into the fiction, well, makes cosplayers laugh. I was just about to say that like yeah. cosplay, like I could totally see that. Well, I mean, you know, they'll go to, like, PAX East, and they'll have the wings sticking out. They'll be knocking everything over, you know, but it'll, <laughs> but it'll look cool. So, Tremel, from a, from a design standpoint, though, I mean, this looks like this is on a, a female character. Yeah, it's on one, of the, one so, of the female characters that we currently have. And uh, this, the, the idea of the thing is that when, when this character falls, this thing kind of pops out to kind of... So, Prin- princess fall. Yeah, it's kind of helping set the, yeah. the fall. So it's not oh, like cool. we talked about rendering the big pink dress and having a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but so we opted for something a little cooler, something a little more modern, yeah, yeah. or umbrella. I think umbrella was oh, parasol. Like, Mary Poppins. Uh, go go gadget, dude. Go go gadget. Oh god. Yeah. But uh, so yeah, this thing is basically kind of like allows you to fall softly and you kind of steer a little bit while you're going down. And this is down. this is specific to this character. Yep. And it's there may cool. be a little more to it if you see that kind of lattice field of blueness that it may have added functionality in it yeah. too. So but I mean, it's pretty cool. I mean, we try to stick with the, one of the manufacturers, and this one's uh, one of the more futuristic manufacturers in the game. Um, so all the higher higher end stuff comes from this this company. Um, so <clears> you'll be able to see the design language once you see all those the weapons and uh, the gadgets that come from this company side by side you'll be able to see that they come from the same manufacturer so this was one of the earliest things like you know working in this project and bringing you on board like you know the stuff that I came up with uh, Josh Ortega you know one of the writers working in the game is like mm-hmm. who these weapon manufacturers are if they made cars what kind of car would they make right and like then Tremel went through into the breakdown of the materials that are used and the colors and everything like that and like you know whenever something's being built you know the first question out of your mouth is like okay who, who manufactures this this yep. weapon this game and then that yields half the design from there, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's a very good, good place to start. Definitely a good place to start because normally what we would do is just we would start off with a bunch of different shapes and silhouettes and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but because we know what manufacturer is building this thing, we already know the shapes, so we can just start with those known shapes and then build it from there. So it's pretty pretty quick. 
Yeah, and I think once people start seeing, like you said, start seeing these manufacturers and kind of this uh, this shared unified vision for each each of the sets, it's going to make a lot more sense, and it's pretty yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. The, the the one that we showed up previously was the the law, which was uh, the Belize, I believe, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. We actually earlier uh, before we had like more details about uh, this particular character, we uh, it made Belize jetpack. That was basically it was a jet pack, not a glide pack. So that was like one of the early designs. I don't know if it's still going to use that at some point in time, but um, if you look at that jet pack and look at the rest of the weapons, you'll see that they all kind of fit in the same thing. Carbon fiber. Yep, carbon fiber all over the place. So Ryan K 7 asks specific to character, referring to this, I believe. Uh, meaning, uh, will there will it be more about characters, or will there be customization? Yeah, so, the, you know, you have, you know, on this hand you have a MOBA, which is like, hey, I'm playing as Joey the Panda Bear, right? And over here you have, you know, Team Fortress where you're just Demo Man. We're mm -hmm. probably going to be about the halfway point there, right? Where, you know, we're not saying this person's name is, you know, Hanzo or anything like that, but they are fulfilling an archetype of a certain role in the universe, uh, but they also have some personality. You know, we got some, uh, it's temporary, but it's just some, some VO in there from uh, Jack, yeah. our audio guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it's great. Girlfriend, it's great. and just, you know, she just starts <laughs> off and starts talking shit, and it just adds a lot, because even apart from it adding character, it adds tells to when you know characters can do some sort of crazy moves, right? Uh, C-Mac Tarmac asks, can we, affect, can we expect the final product this summer? Uh, he said product title. Oh, product title. Big difference, no, my friend. Yeah, big difference. Um, well, so as far as the title goes, um, we are targeting an announce, you know, roughly in that time frame. Yeah, um, we'll see what happens. I will say coming up with a name for this title has been one of the most challenging things of my entire adult life. I'm not joking. It's really hard to do it and have a name that makes sense. So um, I'm feeling really good about that. I think the hardest part was finding something that wasn't taken. Yep. Yeah, they had a lot of great ideas. It. It's just like, nope, can't do that. So I always say there's a reason Mortal Kombat was spelled with a K because somebody probably had a board game oh, in 1970 nice. that took it. <laughs> we tried not Doom, and that was taken too. Yeah, Doom, not Doom. Doom, yeah. Do Doom was taken. But we did Doom with an extra O. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Doom. <laughs> Do we can go to camera two, Chris, real quick. You want to go to camera two? Yeah. Camera two. Right, camera, camera one. Two. Um, so this is a great question from Gray Oz. Um, we know that art, et cetera, is progressing well, but how is the story progressing? Is the story finished already, or is it still being worked on? It's the story's ongoing with a game like this. It's one of those things, uh, right now we have an initial kind of debut trailer that we're working on at some point that will be shown in the future that kind of helps establish the world. And I've always said when you do a game like this it's multiplayer, you need to have a really good kind of backstory and fiction. Um, you know, Josh Ortega has done some writing on it, TJ Fixman from Ratchet and Clank, who's now a freelancer, has done some work. And, um, you know, we want to get to the point where we kind of have a story bible for this world. So, you know, you can jump in the game, pick this character, you know, do this ability or this weapon, but if you go deeper, either, you know, you know actually, you know, I'd like it in the game, so if you click on things, you can actually scroll down and actually read it, as, opposed, text, to, yeah. Yeah, as opposed to go to our website for if, you, if you'd like to know more. Um, no offense, Destiny. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, really important in a game like this. So it's it's progressing well. When yeah. you, you have to have a well-rounded world in this day, right? I yeah, think you're some of those things kind of a lot of stuff that you've already set up. Those are like the kind of like the overviews, kind of like the high-level type stuff. And then some of this stuff kind of gets filled in as certain things come online. You come, we come up with, we come up with something, and then that reminds you of something else. And you're like, okay, we can, we can actually make this fit. In the, in the story by you know changing this around and, and it, you know it's kind of constantly evolves yeah you know yeah. as design starts making new stuff or uh, Josh will come up with a particular area <clears throat> and you know Cliff will say oh yeah that, that could be like this thing that that controls this thing and so then it kind of like works its way into the story yeah and on that though I'm, I think you're selling yourself short a little bit because when I talked to you last year I mean you we talked about your high level idea and story for this game and it was it was great it, it sold me on well, a year and a half a year and a half to think about it <laughs> yeah no but so i think that but like, I, you hit that's the, there the foundation is there creatively you hit the age yeah. where like you know when you're younger it's just you i, I want to make something that's cool and interesting but like later on you start thinking about things like what kind of gameplay will this yield what kind of long-term you know functionality for over the course of hopefully years will this yield for the universe that we can just keep going back to and so it's a it's a very rich world that we can continue to mine for quite some time with quite a few factions. All right. Including the female one. There you go. So we're going to wrap things up. That's already 545. 
Thursday, May 21st. Um, thank you guys for, for joining in, especially a day early. We really appreciate it. Um, yeah, don't be so late next time, Broccoli. <laughs> we come uh, But follow us on all of our, our channels. We're going to upload all of the videos. Um, you know, we're, we always archive uh, the boss room on our YouTube channel and all of the videos that are inside of it, like that weird one today. <laughs> The acting performance of a lifetime. No, no, no. no. There, so oh. she was a character model that had legs that went all the way up. Oh my God. <laughs> There's a VO clip at the very end that we didn't get to that just plays over 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 black. That's oh, it's gonna be in our. Is, it's is gonna it, be in the yeah, YouTube. I always say something for going to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, so thank you for joining us. Um, yeah. Sign up over at bosskey.com. Give us your email, and we will let you know about all of the things that are coming. So thank you. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.